this lesson, we'll create our user interface for our sample program. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll open up Visual Studio, and uh, looks like there's an update out there, so I'll ignore that for now. So I'll open up our uh, project that we were working on in the last lesson. So I'll go ahead and bring that up. It takes just a few seconds for that to load. So once that's loaded, we're going to go ahead and add a scaffolded item. So you select add and then there's a scaffolded item selection. So we're going to add an MVC controller with entity framework. So that's make sure that you select that and we'll select add and now it'll bring down a pull down list of our model class. So we're going to first start with our priority uh, uh, object that was created for us when we scaffolded it out. We'll go ahead and select the, the data context class that's out there. Go ahead and take the rest of the defaults and we'll select add. And It'll take just a few minutes but what this will do will, is scaffold out a basic CRUD or create, update, delete interface, edit, delete interface uh, for our priority table that we created in our database. So. It uh, looks like I inadvertently uh, moved Visual Studio, so I'll go ahead and put that back. So now um, it's really got everything that we need to be able to edit uh, our priority table with the exception of we need an entry point into our program. So under the shared uh, area, I'm going to go ahead and select our main page, and I'll go ahead and copy the menu item that's out there. The unordered list that's in there is the default uh, menu item or menu items for our sample program that Visual Studio created when we created a new project. So I'll go ahead and select and I'll copy the, uh, the existing item here and I'll paste it back in. And once that's in there I'll go ahead and put this on a different line and kind of clean up with uh, some extra space in there. So the action list that's in there, you'll see three arguments to the action list. The first one is the text that's displayed on the menu. So I'll go ahead and change that to be uh, for our priorities. And the next argument that's in there is the controller that it's being called in the action link. So I'll go ahead and scroll down. And this is the controller that was con created through the scaffolding. And it's a, a priorities controller. So you just really need the first part of that uh, name. So I'm just verifying that indeed that it was called the priorities controller. So I'll go ahead and put that in for our controller name. So I'll go ahead and type in priorities. And then the last argument, I'm sorry, the first argument is actually the, the name of the page that you want to call. So when you scaffold out an item, it, it creates an index page. And then the last argument is the name of the controller. So the three arguments are the text that you want to display, the entry point or the name of the page uh, of the view that you want to show, and the last argument is the controller name. So I'll go ahead and build that. Looks like it compiled OK. And we'll go ahead and run it again, and we'll see what this looks like. So now the program is coming up, and we should see a new menu item in addition. So you'll see it on the very far hand side, the right hand side, I'll go ahead and click through the other menus. And now when I click on priorities, it'll bring up the index page, which is the in, in, entry point into our scaffolded code. So I'll go ahead and create a new priority code. Notice it's created a whole edit screen for us. So I'll put in one for low. I'll go ahead and create another one. And I'll put in a, a two here for the entry point. So that's our priority ID. And I'll put in medium for the next priority. And I'll go ahead and add one more just so that we have a third type of priority. And I put in three and we'll put in high. So there we go. So you'll notice that now we have a fully functional and there's also an edit screen. So if I click on that, I can edit this. So we have a, a way to go ahead and add, edit and delete. And Visual Studio has really created all that code for us. So now, now that I've added the priorities and added some data in there, I'll go ahead and repeat the same process now for our task table. And one of the interesting things will be when we go ahead and scaffold out the task table is it will include, since we have a foreign key in there, 
for the priorities will include a pull down list for that so that's pretty cool so we'll go ahead I'll go ahead and select add and it, again it'll be a new scaffolded item and the same thing it'll be an MVC uh, controller uh, with entity framework so I'll go ahead and select that and this time I'll, I'll select a different class I'll select our task uh, class and select add and it'll go through and just in a few seconds we'll go ahead and, and generate all that code for us I'll go ahead and close that down and I'll go back then to our uh, shared screen that we did before and um, also add the same menu uh, entry as well so same process I'll go ahead and add one more menu item so I'll go ahead and copy the one that we just created and hopefully I can paste that back in in the same way without making a mess so uh, same thing paste it back in and I'll change the arguments then to reflect our new class that we're adding for our task really just uh, I'll, I'll change the menu entry item which is the first argument the second argument being the page and the page will again be an index page so I won't have to change that so I'll go ahead and change the the text on the menu and then the controller name I'll go ahead and put in tasks as well All right, so that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll just go ahead and open, double check the controller to make sure that I have the right controller name before I run it. And it does, it looks like it's okay there. So once again, I'll go ahead and build this. Look at the output window, check to make sure there's no problems. It looks like it built okay. So I'll go ahead and run this now. <clears throat> And if everything works right, we should have one more uh, menu entry in here, and we do on the far right hand side. So again, I'll just scroll back through our menus to make sure everything's working okay. The priorities, there's the existing priorities that we put in. And now I'll add a few tasks. So I'll put in a first task here, add a task ID. And the first task I'll put in for cutting the grass. So I won't put in a due date, but I will select a priority. And notice now the priorities are the pull down that we created in the previous step. So that's a really neat thing. Uh, go ahead and add a couple of more tasks just to make sure everything's working okay. We'll add one more here. So let's see, uh, we'll call it clean the garage. And, and this time I'll put in a more uh, detailed description just to make sure that works okay. Go ahead and set the priority for this task. And click Create. Now you'll see the description has showed up on our screen, so that seems to be working okay. I'll add one more task just to kind of finish our testing here. So let's see. Uh, we'll put in a task for the laundry. So again, I'll add another brief description for that. And uh, I'll go ahead and set a priority for this task as well. create and there there we have it so that's our basic user interface for this I'll go ahead and just scroll back through and we see priorities and tasks now um, we now have a fully functioning application so that's quick and dirty how we create the user interface in the next lesson I'll show you how we can customize this a little bit the scaffolding has really cut down on the amount of time it's it's needed to do this so it really creates a lot of code for you and you can go back in and customize that code. So I'll show you how to do that in the next lesson. And thank you very much.